What's up, Blockheads? Welcome to Lynchburg, Tennessee. We are at Barbecue Hill. This is an event with Jack Daniels and Indian Motorcycle. And we are here taking a first look at the Indian Challenger Dark Horse Jack Daniels Collaboration Edition. Butchering that name probably, the correct name is in the title or in the description. But this is a motorcycle from uh, Indian Motorcycle, obviously. This is a Challenger model and it is a collaboration that they did with Jack Daniels to promote the Jack Daniels Rye whiskey that they're doing has been happening for a couple years. So let's go ahead and show you guys how we got here. Rewind back to that airport montage of goodness. And then we'll come back and we'll show you guys some beautiful B-roll shots of this thing and talk about it a bit. So they don't have rooms ready, so we're just gonna chill here. Apparently I gotta pull out some stuff with this. We got a event agenda t-shirt. Nice. Got a cup. I think it's one of those things to make the ice, right? Yeah, that's cool. Little patch, that's neat. Oh cool. Coin. Clockworks, Jack Daniels, Indian motorcycle. I think it's like a little night gator. And press pass. Plus wrist uh, bracelet thing. All right, I gotta sign this. Oh, twenty dollars off. Yeah, I gotta sign this NDA. So, here right back. Pretty much a homemade blowtorch. It's uh, it's readily available, and we don't want to taste anything in the whiskey except for whiskey, diesel fuel, starter fluid, jet fuel. That's petroleum products. That's going to stick around. And you don't want that. Wow. This is all by design. This is an art form. They're not leaned in on itself by accident. They're split and stacked that way, leaned together, piled up on top because that's going to burn down very evenly and consistently on itself. Oh. Hope you don't have any cuts on the table. Oh yeah, you don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like a cheap lotion, right? You yeah. And then also, if you'll smell your hand after it dries a little more. Because they dump it in here to grind it. It goes up the chute outside. They take a wide axle tractor with a wide axle trailer, grain trailer. They drive it under there and it just drops right down in the trailer. is also very mineral rich so you want to talk about adding the character and flavor of Jack's whiskey it all starts right here with this water yeah uh, this goes back almost two miles they spelunked it in the 1970s they have a suction pipe in there taking it up to our reservoir on the hill we keep that topped off at 10 million gallons 10 10 million is huge it's huge it's concrete the bottom of the walls are four feet thick on the bottom so. uh, five two never married never had any children I might have been by design because he might have been a lifelong bachelor but he was a well-known ladies man there are folks that'll tell you after all those girlfriends his seventh girlfriend held a special place in his heart those same folks are going to try to convince you that's where old number seven wow. came from <laughs> <laughs> now factually where old number seven came from I'm here to clear it up for you we have no idea <laughs> <laughs> Jack took the, the real reason history. to the grave with party guy he was uh, he owned two saloons on the town square of Lynchburg he was known to give his money away now his nephew we had mentioned right here Lim Motlow uh, more of a mathematician business-minded 
He told Jack, Jack, listen, you, you gotta stop giving your money away. You won't have enough for your own funeral. And he tried to put Jack on a budget. You try to put your boss on a budget, let me know how that works out. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, something happened right here in this office, 1905. What happened uh, was actually extremely rare. One morning, Jack showed up to work early. And that in itself was very rare. <laughs> he was kind of more of a night out. Yeah. Walked in, looked around, thought, hey, if I'm the only one here, this is my office. I can start this day just like anybody else. Bent down to a safe, going to get the paperwork out for the day, and couldn't. Kept trying, kept trying. Boss is cool. Got mad about it, so he stood up, hauled off, he kicked that safe with everything he had. And it was a good kick because it broke his toe. Well, uh, a little bit stubborn, didn't rush right away to the doctor. So when he got there, uh, the doctor said, yeah, it, it's broke. And there's an infection. Modern medicine, 1905, what do you do? You remove the toe to stop the infection. Oh, didn't slow it down. Infection started rising up into his foot, so a little while later they had to amputate again. Now from the time he kicked it, fast forward six years, 1911. So Jack's at home, he's suffering in bed. Uh, the doctor had one last attempt to save his life, so they amputated high, almost to his left hip. Didn't stop. 19 and 11, 61 years old, Jack Nino died and results kicking this safe in this office right now. Wow. All right, so this building has alcohol vapor, so it can't film. <laughs> As per maybe blowing up, so we're going to the green room. Where are we going? Barbecue. Barbecue Hill. Hill. Yeah. Alright, Barbecue Hill. B-roll shots. Looks a lot different whenever you're in the bike and you're going through all the little details that they're paying attention to when it's like during the day and it's not surrounded by people. So absolutely beautiful bike, lots of attention to detail. As I'm shooting it, these guys over here are kind of commenting on it. What are y'all's thoughts on this bike so far? Man, I'm a little biased, but it's pretty awesome. I like the gold heads. I think the heads are a nice touch. Yeah, it's great stitching in the sea, color scheme. Best one they've done yet, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, incredible, uh, incredible paint job. Yeah, the paint. Uh, yeah, it's I've like that bass boat. Personal, I've, uh, I felt the paint, and uh, it's incredible. Yes, yeah. it's, it's quite impressive. I dig it. I really like the floorboards. They this like nice little sort of like wheat detail. That's yeah. pretty sweet. And it's like on the front and rear. Definitely a bike for that person that appreciates those small little attentions to detail. Paint on this thing is 
absolutely crazy. It does have a little fiber optic light, it matches with these. Obviously LEDs all around. I did ask if we were gonna get to be able to ride one of these. Unfortunately, the answer is, is no, because they are a numbered bike. So this is number one of 107. There's only 107 made and this is the first one, which is pretty bad. Neil mentioned a little bit of green. There is a little bit of green striping. The Indian, it almost looked like a gold leaf, but it's not quite. And then you've got the anodized heads, which is awesome. And then that little bit of uh, gold around there as well. Like you were saying, the wheat and the floorboards there. Also in these, and then you flip it. There's Jack Daniels on the backside. Jack Daniels in the seat, stitching in the seat. Awesome, feels pretty comfy. You've got speakers in the bags. Pretty much normal storage space. The interior bezel here is also painted so you guys can see like the flake in most of this. And then this is the button here for the fogs. Pretty much like the same as the other Challengers. In terms of layout, dual disc Brembos, gold on the cover, and then back here, drive responsibly. Bottles and throttles don't mix. You guys do me a favor, in the comments down below, let me know what you guys think. It's awesome, just looks great. Wish we could ride one, but totally understand not being able to as it's a numbered bike. But we are gonna get to ride, in this video, you guys will see we're gonna actually get to ride the Challenger, which, what did we do? 130 miles today, Neil? Yeah, 130. 130? Yeah, so we're gonna get some seat time. Let's go ahead and get to that. Good morning guys, it is the next day. Came back from Barbecue Hill at Jack Daniels and I was just absolutely beat. I ended up falling asleep on the bus over. This is a hotel room, I guess, just to show you guys this. Yeah, pretty standard hotel room. One thing is, this is cool though. Got the lights up here. That's pretty neat. And I didn't even look at the view. I think I'm on the fifth floor. No view, it's all fogged up. Yeah. Anyways, we got a bunch of motorcycles all down there. We'll be riding one of them. Go ahead, get some breakfast. All right, guys, we're sitting here on the Indian Challenger Limited. Torquey beast. So yeah, we are working our way outside of Nashville. As soon as we get, uh, I don't know, like a little bit more outside of like traffic lights and you know, traffic and stuff. I'll get a little bit more into the bike. Now this isn't really like a test ride review. This is actually my second time on the Challenger. The first time around was in Orlando and so it really didn't do it justice. And so Indian Motorcycle invited me up here to uh, check out the release of the new Indian Challenger that they've collaborated with Jack Daniels, which they've done in the past for a couple different model bikes. But this year they did the Challenger and Jack Daniels Rye Whiskey. Absolutely beautiful. It is a limited edition. Edition. I want to say there's like 107 of them. It's cool like for them to collaborate with like a huge brand such as Jack Daniels. I think it's a you know, really smart idea to kind of come out with, I mean, people love motorcycles and they love Jack Daniels. <laughs> You're not supposed to have the two together. You're not supposed to drink and ride, right? One of the things I do remember about this motorcycle is it being just like incredibly smooth. I remember whenever I was on a toll road up there in Orlando and I was cooking along at like 90, almost 100 miles an hour, I think. And I remember saying like, yo, it does not feel like I'm going that fast. Definitely one of the things I recognize getting back on the bike is like this, the smoothness of it and the seat being comfortable, the rider triangle being comfortable, you know, with the, the footboards. And then you got just like tons of tech packed into this thing. Big bump. Suspension soaked it up, no problem. That was not bad at all. So yeah, the Indian Challenger, if this is y'all's first time watching a video on it, this is an offering from Indian Motorcycle and it has the fixed fairing, which is awesome as it's attached to frame. So whenever you turn, which you guys can see I'm moving the bars a little bit there. The fairing stays fixed. It does not move with the bars. Unlike their other option, the Chieftain, which has the fairing not fixed to the frame. It's fixed to the forks and it turns with the bars. Now, me personally, I prefer a fixed fairing. The reason that I prefer a fixed fairing is because 
you don't feel like any of the wind, like that vibration in the bars, and so it makes it a smoother ride. Wind can definitely beat you up. If you remove that, you're basically not gonna get tired as quickly as if you're taking wind to the chest and the helmet and the arms. It's really a fight, like especially if you've got a headwind coming at you, if you're riding a motorcycle without a windshield, you just gotta kind of like really hold on and your helmet's just shaking and it can be a pain. On that note, good time to mention the adjustable windshield. So if I press up on this button, windshield go up I press down on the button windshield go down on the fly adjustability so yeah I mean the bikes obviously made for touring it's got creature comforts there's definitely more creature comforts on this thing such as this seven inch display ride command with connect services traffic and weather overlays so like if I press this left trigger lever it will take me to the uh, built-in GPS there we go and then it does work with gloves, so it is a touch screen. So we're gonna touch there, you basically have map layers. You can import or export routes. Map layers takes me to traffic and weather, pretty cool. And it is very responsive to gloves. Now I have heard that if it's raining though, it can have some issues. You know, you've got wet gloves, you've got wet screen. It's not gonna work the best, but pretty awesome that like I'm barely touching and it's working really well. So if I pull the trigger lever again, let's just go ahead and go through the display then. If I pull the trigger lever again, it goes over to the radio, which Got it on this. I'm gonna be, gonna be, yeah. Whew, that was like halfway and it was crazy loud. So yeah, you've got um, the radio, speakers. Actually, in some of them, you got speakers in the saddlebags. I think on the Jack Daniels Rye edition for the Challenger, there are speakers in the bags. And you can connect Bluetooth, so connect your phone, program in radio stations, all that good stuff. And you can turn it up and down here as well. If I tap the trigger again, go to the next screen over, we've got kind of a combination of screens here. You've got GPS on the left, and then you've got your uh, speedometer on the right side. You've got your compass in the middle there, and then your your fuel range so it says miles range we've got 208 you also do have these things up in analog gauges as well so you've got your miles per hour here and then in that you also have a fuel gauge in the bottom which you know shows you the level of the tank as well so we're pretty much full and saying 209 range now adjusting on the fly and on the right you've got um, your rpms and your gear indicator and your odometer brakes on this thing are awesome dual disc brembos so if i pull my trigger lever again we go over to this info screen this is going to give me kind of similar information it's just a different layout actually uh tells me the psi of the tires so in the rear i'm looking at 46 in the front i'm looking at 44 so it does have the uh, tire pressure sensors uh we've also got the mileage once again 209 the uh, battery voltage and i don't know the amount of oil life maybe left which is that's pretty cool so it says oil 4703 miles i guess we'll see if it goes up or down but is that like the time till the next oil change or is that the amount of miles that this oil has on it either way that's a that's a pretty cool feature that's pretty awesome i wish like more of the bikes that i own had the option to basically like do an oil reset counter which i know you can do it like with trip a or trip b like eric Baggerbro, he says he uses trip b as like the oil uh trip reset which is pretty smart man this clutch like easing out for the uh the friction zone it is <laughs> incredibly grabby there's a certain spot which is like on off which isn't a bad thing it just takes a little bit of getting used to okay so it just went down right because it was at 4703 so that means as it it counts down to when you need the oil change that's pretty awesome oh yeah all right and if we go to the next screen over once again trigger switch on the left this is your ride information which is pretty bad this is one of those things that the uh, indian chief also has which i absolutely loved it basically keeps up with like you know your elevation change your ride time all that good stuff so yeah you've got ride time distance time moving time stopped that's kind of crazy elevation change you've got your immediate miles per gallon here so like i'm in fourth gear it 25 just over 2500 rpm if i shift up to fifth drops the rpms down to about two and we're looking at a higher miles per gallon oh and then that's cool so it basically shows you the immediate whenever you get on it but the red one i guess would stay at like the what the average is so that's pretty cool so moving over to the next one goes back to the gps so i'm just gonna leave it on the gps just because like i feel like there's kind of um like if i'm looking at my speedometer there but it's up here also so i'm just gonna gps it kind of see where we're at even though i have no idea where we are because you know we're here in tennessee headed to lynchburg the jack daniels factory we did that tour yesterday which you guys have seen some footage of already i don't know if you guys have been following 
doing the uh, bagger racing stuff, but you got like your king of the baggers, and then you got bagger racing league, which they're two separate, different ones. I was confused there for a little bit. I thought they were the same thing, but king of the baggers and then bagger racing league. Basically, these companies are taking bagger motorcycles, which are not meant for racing, and they're making them <laughs> able to to be raced. They're basically cutting the the saddlebags and the cases and adjusting the seats and obviously like doing big bore kits and really putting a lot of performance into them carbon fiber lightening them up to where it's just crazy these things can do like just some insane stuff whenever you you know outfit them properly and put a a race you know a racer rider on the bike so i did decide to put my jacket in the bag just because i thought it was going to be colder this morning oh this is beautiful and it wasn't really cold like it's a surprising amount of humidity here in tennessee which i'm totally used to in florida and now we're moving that's a little chilly <laughs> it's not that crazy long of a ride today and we can also cruise control it so i don't want to duck behind just uh slap the cruise control on so set it to the left Boop. there we go yep just tuck right here my arms are protected now okay then <laughs> so yeah i guess i was going over most of ride command you also do have the buttons on the bottom that are like quick buttons so if you want to quickly get to like the road statistics settings back like your main menu do that one phone and then music i'm just gonna leave it on nav over here you've got your high beam low beam pass light horn pretty loud horn indicators left right they are self-canceling and then you've got music selection and menu selection stuff here you do have a trigger switch on the right but i don't really know what that does i can't see anything changing whenever i pull it uh, then you've got your on off and your start your cruise control and your windshield adjustment so that's cool if you tap twice on it it goes up all the way for you and then if you press and hold you can set it to a specific height so yeah two taps down it goes all the way down also that's cool nice change of scenery that's for sure it's always nice being able to ride outside of florida i do enjoy florida man i feel like i always say this during these trips i enjoy florida but man it does leave a little bit to be desired in terms of like rolling hills and twisties not that we're hitting too many of those today i know uh, the route today isn't really mountainous we're not in the right part of tennessee for that you do have uh two little storage options as well so you've got one cubby there and then you've got a cubby over here on the right side as well which i've got my sunglasses in there then there's also a usb charging cable you've got a uh, plug there which that's cool it's not like a normal cigarette lighter plug that is um, like a quick charger plug and then looks like you've got some like a button over here like another option like if you want to mount something or put like some kind of plug or button there as well and of course we've got the highway bars we've got floorboards and these big old bags which on the right side i've got my camera gear in on the left side i've got a leather jacket and a hat in it is convenient as hell to have bags anyways guys yeah my i wouldn't even say my initial first thoughts and impressions because i've ridden the bike before but great amount of power to the thing you know it's really torquey very responsive it does have the different rider modes which if you want to access tap on the top indian part right there and it'll take you to be able to switch those one of the things they said for the chief was there needs to be a way to change the rider modes with the press of like one button instead of having to go into the menus so he was saying that he was uh in the rain and his gloves were wet and the screen was wet and he was he was having trouble taking it out of sport mode and putting it into rain mode so you basically tap there brings that down got rain standard sport so we're in standard which is you know normal throttle response it is a uh, fly by wire rain is obviously going to like tame it down a bit more and then you've got sport mode which if i remember correctly as per what they say 35 percent throttle pull gives you 100 percent power so i'm going to switch it over into sport mode here in just a moment and yeah i'm just going to enjoy the ride whenever we get to our destination uh, i will give you guys my second thoughts and impressions of actually being able to take this bike in a uh, proper test ride but what i can tell you thus far is i'm enjoying it it is really difficult for me not to enjoy a motorcycle i love all sorts of different styles and kinds of motorcycles from you know big baggers like this to you know mini bikes i don't own any touring or you know bagger motorcycles uh just because that's currently not the type of riding i do but 
you know, it'll happen. I definitely want to uh, aim to take some more road trips in the future. We're just really busy right now around Orlando and I can't really take like a ton of time for beautiful rides like this. So for the time being, I am fortunate and lucky enough for these companies to invite me out to be able to do videos like this to enjoy this stuff and ride their motorcycles. And that's, once again, thanks to you guys hitting the subscribe button and the like button and leaving a comment, and I greatly appreciate it. I would not be in the position that I am in right now with working with Indian Motorcycle or any of the companies that I work with if it wasn't for y'all. So, once again, as I always say, thank you guys, I really appreciate it. here at the parking lot for uh, the Jack Daniels distillery tour area. I think we're headed to Barbecue Hill afterwards. Great bike, man. I just switched the uh, speed limiter was not set at 110 on the stock bike. <laughs> but but yeah, man, it hauls and it's, it's very good, man. Very good. You enjoyed it? Oh, yeah, cool. loved it. All right, how about you, man? What are your thoughts? <laughs> what Indian are my thoughts? Uh, are you your first time riding this bike? First time riding it. Been a while since I've ridden a bike this big. I thought it was super fun, super smooth, great sound system. Yeah, you barely even have to notch it up to like really uh, get a lot of sound, which is pretty nice when you're cruising country roads, you yeah. know, and just kind of like rocking out. I was super impressed, super easy to control, very smooth acceleration, yeah. and like very easy to get up to very high speeds without even <laughs> thinking about it. Thought trying. It's, it's super fun. I dug it. All right, we're back at Jack Daniels for the party round two. Woo! <laughs> All right, man, we're in the barbecue line. I'm excited. Cheers, sirs. It's been a good weekend with y'all. Oh, Hasn't even been a weekend. <laughs> Lockhead family, what's up, guys? So I don't think I've said anything to you guys about Ricky being here, but you're here. Did I get you on video yesterday? I can't remember. A little bit, but then I freaked out because I was you. Oh, that's right. Oh, shit! Go give him a follow. What are you doing, a video also? Yeah, are you I'm doing, doing a like little a... little bit of video. I'm getting more constant right now, but yeah, mostly Instagram. And now I'm trying to be like this guy right here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's way better. He's way better. You guys go check him out. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, dude. Thank you, brother. <laughs> All right, guys, that's the video with Indian Motorcycle going over their new collaboration with Jack Daniels. I hope you guys have enjoyed the trip and the insight into this limited edition motorcycle. It was really awesome being able to, you know, stand beside number one and check it out. Big thanks to Indian Motorcycle and Jack Daniels for having us out. Really appreciate it, uh, as well as the brand amp for all the coordination. If you have any questions, be sure to post them down in the comments below. Let me know. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button for me. It lets YouTube know that we're doing a good job. If you guys want to continue to see moto content like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon also while you're over there so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Until next time, ride safe, stay vigilant. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.